and welcome to this ANSYS video course on designing microwave passive components using the ANSYS Electronics Desktop or AEDT for short. In the previous video, we analyzed the branch line quadrature hybrid. In this video, we're going to analyze the single section coupler and study the coupling effects by varying the gap between the coupled lines using a parametric sweep. So let's go ahead and design two types of single section couplers. One will use strip line technology and the other will use microstrip technology. And a comparison of the different S parameters and the coupling results will be shown for these models. A single section coupler is a four port network device and the interaction of the electromagnetic fields between the transmission lines from one line to the other section of transmission lines determines the amount of coupling. As shown here, port 1 acts as the input port where you put the excitation in, where power enters and flows towards port 2, which is the output port for this segment of transmission line. And then port 3 is the coupling port and port 4 is the isolated port. And the single section coupler, it can be used in applications such as modulators or filters or amplifiers. And as we did in the previous video, let's go ahead and use an example from that same reference textbook. Design a 20 dB single section coupler and strip line with a 0.32 centimeter ground plane spacing, a dielectric constant of 2.2, a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms, and a center frequency of 3 gigahertz. Plot the coupling and directivity from 1 to 5 gigs. Let's create this strip line single section coupler using ANSYS HFSS. So here is the user interface of AEDT with the new project. Insert the HFSS design by clicking on the icon in the ribbon area. And after the HFSS design is inserted in the project manager window, right mouse click on the design and select solution type. In the pop-up window, select HFSS type for the solution type, network analysis, and terminal type. And let's add an auto open region. Click OK to close the window, right mouse click on the design, select design properties, and click on add to add design variables to the model geometry. Here are the added local variables used for this geometry creation. Go ahead and let's create the substrate. Select the draw box command, randomly draw a box in the 3D modeler window. In the properties panel, change the position and size, rename it as substrate, change the material to Rogers RT Doroid. Go ahead, change the color and transparency, click OK, and create the strip line by selecting the draw rectangle command. Draw a rectangle anywhere in the 3D modeler window, change the position and size as shown, rename it at to strip line, change the color transparency again, copy and paste the rectangle objects, change its position, and this creates the strip line. Select all the rectangles and thicken. And select all the rectangles and unite. Make sure that the material is copper and it's assigned to all those united objects. Let's make the edges look more realistic and select the edges of the strip line. And from the draw tab, select chamfer and specify the chamfer dimensions as shown and click OK. And let's create the top and bottom ground planes. Select the top and bottom surfaces of the substrate. Use create object from face command to create the object from the faces of the substrate. Rename the newly created objects to ground one and ground two. Change the color. Thicken the ground planes and be sure to assign copper material again. In the ribbon area of the draw tab, click on offset origin. Place the coordinate system on the top edge center of the strip line. And similarly, add a coordinate system to the other open edges of the strip line. In the draw tab ribbon area, select the YZ drawing plane to create the port objects. With the relative coordinate system once selected, click on the draw rectangle option. Input the port options, rename it as port one. Again, create the port objects in the other open ends of the strip lines. And in the model tree window, select all the port objects, right mouse click, select assign excitation, and assign lump ports. In the pop-up window, select the ground objects as reference, click OK, 
and in the project manager window, right mouse click the excitations folder and select edit sources. By default, only port one is excited, but you can use this window to change the model excitation as needed. No changes for this model, so go ahead and close the window. Single solution frequency at three gigs, click OK. In the Edit Frequency Sweep pop-up window, edit the Interpolating Frequency Sweep range. Click OK to close the window. Go to the Simulation tab, click on Validate. After that, validation checks are successfully completed. Right mouse click on Setup. Click on Analyze to run the simulation. Here's the S parameter result. To add a marker, right mouse click in the Result window. Select the marker, add X marker to see the value at some frequency. And here is the surface current's magnitude plot on the conductors of the strip line. And the animation shows the magnitude of the induced current on the other strip line. And here's the electric field magnitude plot on the top section of the substrate just below the traces. The animation of this field plot shows that the electric field flows from port 1 to port 2. And note that some of that field is coupled to the other strip line and flows to port 3 and you can also see there's a little amount of field that's going towards port 4 as well. And let's see what happens to that coupling as the gap varies between the lines. Go ahead and add a parametric setup for the gap variable. Right mouse click on Optimetrics, add and select Parametric. A new window pops up, click on Add to add the parametric sweep. And in that variable drop down menu, select Gap, choose Linear Step. Edit the start, the stop, and the step values. Click on Add. Click OK to accept the parametric sweep. Click on OK to close the window. And in that Project Manager window, right mouse click on Parametric Setup and select Validate. It's a good practice to always validate on the parametric variations before really starting a parametric analysis. After the validation is successful, analyze the sweep. Once the analysis is completed, View the results. Here's a 2D report of the coupling between ports 1 and 3 for the different gap values. And as the gap increases between the two strip lines, the coupling decreases. Okay, let's change this model. And let's analyze it as a microstrip single section coupler. In the HFSS design, the microstrip transmission line width is recalculated and modified to ensure a 50 ohm impedance line with an air substrate above the trace. We also deleted the top ground plane. And here's the S parameter plot, and here's the electric field magnitude plot on the top face of that substrate. Now this is one of the advantages of an EM simulation, such as HFSS, is that you can visualize the fields for better understanding. Let's see the differences between the field plots for the strip line and the micro strip line cases. In the strip line model, the fields are evenly confined around the trace between the top and the bottom ground planes. And in the micro strip line model, there's a little bit more fringing on the top of the substrate in the air substrate than the bottom substrate because of the different material permittivities and the absence of that top ground. Now let's see another effect which we can easily see in HFSS. Let's see the effects of adding connectors to that strip line model. In real life, we need to connect to the transmission lines. Let's add the pre-installed ANSYS HFSS 3D component SMA connector models to this design. And you can copy the previous strip line model to the project tree or just modify it. Make sure you delete the auto open solution type as it's now a covered connectorized model. Also, delete the port objects in the previous design model. Select the Model tab and select Browse 3D Models and select the model. Refer to our previous Branchline Quadrature Hybrid Part 2 video for more information on using HFSS 3D components or view our video series on HFSS 3D components. And here's the updated SMA connectorized model and the center pin of this 3D component was modified for strip line implementation. A waveport excitation is used. Here's the final model with the inserted 3D component SMA connector at all the open ends of the strip line. Go ahead, analyze the model. Here's the S parameter plots comparing the lump to port 
and the SMA connectorized models. You can see the insertion loss is different, the return loss is different because of the connectorization, but the curve in itself looks the same. Let's go ahead and see the effect of flexing that single section coupler model, wrapping it around some object. And here is the bent single section model design. And we wrap this model around the cylinder object using the wrap function. Again, a step-by-step -step detail on how to wrap a printed circuit board substrate. Refer to the microstrip filter video or view our video modules on flexing printed circuit boards. And here are the S parameters for the planar and the wrap single section coupler. Notice that with the wrap model, the coupling decreases. This is expected. Thank you for watching this video that shows you how to analyze a single section coupler using different implementation. We use strip line and microstrip. We use a connectorized strip line. Go ahead and do it for a microstrip. We parameterize the gap and change the coupling. And then coupling changes also as we wrap the board around some cylinder. An advantage of HFSS is that we are able to view the fields and see how they propagate through the strip line or microstrip implementations. To find more information or courses on AEDT or any of the ANSYS simulation products, please go ahead and visit the ANSYS innovation space at community.ansys.com and select learning.